Welcome everyone to the Pantheon. I'm Ray. I'm Chelsea. And today we're looking at the movie The Launch. It's uh, one of the earliest films that got released. Uh, it had theatrical release, limited release. Uh, it came out, I think, in February of the year of uh, 2020. Uh, the premise is basically you have a uh, fiance or wife to be uh, spending time with, yeah, it's a fiance, spending time with these two kids of a man whose uh, wife passed away about a year ago. And uh, she, and this is not, this is probably a spoiler here up front. Uh, she was a patient of his a few years ago, and they no longer, she's no longer a patient. They fell in love. And now it's, uh, they, the kids feel that she's sort of like impeding, taking the place of the mother, which is kind of a natural reaction where uh, young kids, like you have an a, a eight year old and then I think a five year old, I'm not sure the ages are, or maybe a 10 and five. And they're just not used to uh, f having someone to fill the mother's shoes. And so it's Christmas and there's, the father takes, spends the, takes the family up to the lodge and then he has to go back to work. So it's, it's about five days before Christmas Eve He'll be back Christmas Eve, and then so in those three, four days, the family can, you know, get together, get to know each other, and before the really holidays. And so it allows them to be isolated to, to coexist. Uh, it stars Riley Kehoe. It's directed by uh, an Austrian writing director's duo, uh, Severin Fiala, Fiala and uh, Veronica Franz. Uh, they, uh, the, the last film together was a movie called Goodnight Mother. It's, uh, it's a, if you've seen the trailer for this or seen the movie, it's an awesome film. This is an evolution of that film, and I don't want to give you anything away, but if you like films like um, Funny Games, which was a film that's about uh, home invasion, it's kind of violent, it's not that, but it's, it's on that uh, uh, nerve and that vein. And this is, this, this is an element, Goodnight Mother is an evolution of what this movie is, but on a different scale. Now, how they met, uh, I was going to tell you how they met. Okay, so uh, Severin, is, he's a younger man, he, uh, he, or his babysitter was Veronica. So, so, he, so basically they were, they were originally a babysitter and uh, that's how they met, that's how the is. Oh. Right, so now he's, now they're writing partners and directing partners. But yeah, but she was his babysitter growing up. That's wild. Yeah. So you, cause you're wondering, well, how much of that relationship of being babysitter and you know, and you know, a person who comes and you know, the child I look after, uh, goes onto the screen, onto the script, because there is that kind of relationship of like a parental figure and these two kids. So they, that understanding of that of that like, dynamic is common for these two. So it's a little strange. That's weird. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, well, that kind of ha that has to like parlay into this. So you wonder how much of that is based on truth True, and how much yeah. is just obscure like is, there's nothing like sexual about, about this movie it's just the, the kids and the babysitter and how that actually kind of uh, the parental figure and the, and the, and the, yeah, kids. the kids and uh, what I'll say about this movie uh, is it is a the character played by Riley Ke Kehoe uh, is uh, uh, I forgot her name but like she, she is trying to rationalize everything every step of the way with what's going on so it's it is a creeping thriller. You don't know if it's, if it's a supernatural thriller. You don't know uh, if it's um, just like an eerie, if it's eerie or if it's in her head. You don't know what's going on. So it's, it's very ambiguous in the beginning. Uh, Alicia Silverstone is in the beginning of this movie yeah. and she has a shocking in, it's intro. Like it's just a shocking, it's a short, she's, she's like a kind of cameo appearance. It's very shocking. And then it gets into this film. And I'm, uh, for me, the, the ending speaks volumes to how this film develops. And it's unfortunately, uh, if you, you have to allow yourself to go through the narrative of this film, this, to feel it, to understand where it's coming, where it's going to, like where, where is the, what's the point of this movie? And, and, and you realize, it's in the trailer too, like slowly but surely she sees her, her father, uh, who, is a, who was a leader of a cult, of a death cult, and it's starting to play uh, is she's being haunted or she's not being haunted and then and then where this where this is leading into and it's because and there are, it's this it's kind of the shine where you're abandoned you're alone in the snowy uh, environment of rural lodges yeah. and there's no one around to help you and it's just white and it's just it's kind of like a midsummer like open open field area but it's just a whiteness and you're it's like the abandonment and isolation I think the fear is in the isolation of the snow and there's no one around to help you and the snow comes and the, the, store, the snow, snow storm comes in and there's nothing to save you like you're alone with the elements and you're here to help save the kids defend the kids mm -hmm. which is played really heavily in this film 
it, the horror kicks in. And it's that feeling of isolation, uh, uncertainty. It now becomes life and death. And that's that's the selling point of this movie. And then, of course, the supernatural element or the unknown, which kind of filters in, adds the added level of direct attention for it. So that's me selling the movie for you if you want to see it. <laughs> Uh, the tr I recommend seeing the trailer, and then you kind of understand what I'm getting at. But your yeah, thoughts? Definitely. Um, from what I saw, I thought the kids did a tremendous job. I find that uh, kids in scary movies naturally, it's like a gift to them, which is odd because they're children. But no, these kids did um, a really good job. Uh, they held their characters very well, too. Um, but I would have to give this movie another chance because I didn't really grasp onto it uh, in the beginning, but from your selling, it definitely sounds like a movie that is a must watch. Yeah, I, I told her the ending, and I'm like, okay, this is what happens in the movie. <laughs> you're like, no. I'm like, yeah, you gotta watch the movie. You're like, <laughs> yeah. you're like, oh, and then once you realize what the ending is, or how where it goes, you're like, oh my gosh, really? <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, word? Yeah, man, it's, this is going, so yeah, so like, it's, an, it's a, yeah, because you don't, like, you honestly don't know well, no, you do know where it's going, but you can't you, you can't uh, anticipate like they won't go there, yeah. and, and and they go there, and you're like, oh, <laughs> it's like John Wick's like, oh, John Wick, oh, you know, like it's that yeah, kind of yeah. like, oh, okay, yeah. definitely not a prediction movie, yeah, yeah. It just comes at you. Yeah, so it, for me, it was a wonderful, it's a wonderful ride, and I saw this in theaters, luckily enough, and I think I, I was telling you before, it's like the communal feeling of those experiencing it with a group. It's, it's, it's more rewarding, but if you watch it on your own, it's just as good. But like, it's just, uh, and the, the actors here are, are seasoned actors. You, you see these kids uh, in a lot of movies too. Um, but it's just a wonder, it's a wonderful uh, piece, uh, but it is kind of like, okay, you have to understand where it's coming from. It's like Hereditary, where there is something tragic at the beginning. And so that's where I'd say that's where the Ari Aster uh, kind of uh, comes from, but then it kind of goes its own direction. And uh, if you if you if you if you decide to go to the end of it, hopefully you'll find the ending rewarding and not and let down. Whereas some movies, the endings, which we'll be reviewing in the months ahead or weeks ahead of us, it's just oh, they I I don't know. It's yeah. it's not as bad as Cats. Some movies, but like uh, <laughs> did but, not see that. Oh, I want to see a bunch of people and fuzzy leotards. Yeah, no, this <laughs> it's there's some movies that came out which we'll, we'll, we'll be reviewing. It's just like the ending. You're like. Uh, no, no, it's it's bad. So, uh, what would you give it out of rating? Um, I would give it uh, from me a two and a half, but from your cell, it definitely makes me want to watch it. So, I would bring it up to at least a three and a half until I get like my full review on that. Yeah, I'm gonna give this me. It's gonna be a solid three. Yeah, three point five. Uh, it is. It's wonderfully shot. The music and the scoring and how it's framed. If you, if you listen to the score and how it's framed and how what where they're doing with this with technically, it's it's done with intention. You get to appreciate it more. And uh, the choice of sound is amazing. And then the visuals is cool. And then these kids, um, yeah, I I have it it, it, it evoked a, a certain amount of emotion for me at the end with these kids. I, I can't get into it, uh, but uh, for me the ending is very satisfying. Uh, on many levels for me personally, you know, it has nothing, nothing to do with it. If I have, I don't have children, but like if I had children and I saw this, the, the feeling I had towards these children, and I'm not telling you the, I won't give away the out, the, the outcome, but like, uh, I felt gratified <laughs> to, uh, uh, exponentially gratified with the ending, uh, because of where this goes. Uh, that doesn't tell you, hopefully doesn't, that doesn't tell you about me personally as a human being, but as you, when you see what happens in this film, you you understand, <laughs> you'll understand. So I'll give this three and a half. You give this three and a half. And uh, so with that, that's a launch. I will see you next time. Take care.